Hey everyone, welcome to this week's High Value Publishing Session. I'm glad to be back this week after having spent last week back in DC with the uh, the, the Niche Media Conference back there. Uh, I'm especially excited to have uh, a special guest with me today, uh, Peter Erickson with Zine 101 and Leaky Paywall. Peter, you wanna say hi to everyone? Uh, hey Eric, thank you, hi everybody. Let's talk about uh, paywalls, shall we? Absolutely. We're going to talk today about paywalls and, and registration walls, too. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to talk about some successful paywall and reg wall strategies that uh, both Peter and I have, have seen here. And uh, I'll give you a little more information on Peter here in just a second. But I want to do a quick little housekeeping notes, as always. This session is indeed being recorded, and it will be re posted to the High Value Publishing uh, website, which is the same as the Nearview Media website, just a redirect. Um, but it'll be posted there by Thursday. And all of our past sessions are out there as well. Uh, any links that Peter and I talk about today uh, will be uh, posted with this session when it goes live on the site. Uh, and if you can't follow us live, you can always subscribe to us as a podcast on really any of your favorite platforms out there. It's on almost all of them now. Uh, I do encourage everyone, uh, we'd love this to be an interactive discussion today for the folks who are live, uh, feel free to use the chat button right there on your Zoom toolbar and uh, ask any questions uh, with, for Peter or for me that you want about um, paywalls, registration walls. Uh, this can work for B2B, B2C. Um, anybody you want to talk about that, post that on there. If you're watching it um, archived, uh, just go to highvaluepublishing.com and there's post a question button right there. You can ask a question there. We'll get to it. Uh, and as always, I want to thank our friends at What's New in Publishing. Uh, we really appreciate their partnership. They republish these sessions every single week out there. And I think it's one of the best publications out there for publishers wanting to keep up with what's going in the digital space. Um, Peter, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to brag on you here for a little bit. Um, I, I've kind of known Peter off and on for, gosh, 10 years now or more. Uh, we've never done a ton of work together, but I, I, I've used his Leaky Paywall plugin for some of my clients. Um, but Peter's the founder of Zine 101. Uh, he, they, they do develop a, a paywall plugin, which is a very, very good plugin out there. Um, you can go check that out at leakypaywall.com if you're interested. Um, by the way, we're going to talk today about just paywall strategies in general. You don't have to use Leaky Paywall, but hey, if you're considering looking at one, check it out. I think it's one of the best ones out there. Um, Peter also hosts the, the Paywall Podcast. Yeah, believe it or not, I thought I was being niche, Peter, when I was launching a, a podcast for um, you know, yeah. digital media strategies for publishers. But you even went further and you said, hey, we're going to launch a podcast just for paywalls. Uh, what, what got you into wanting to do that? Oh, uh, my partner, Jeremy, told me we had to do it. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. We've been so there's a lot of opportunity with um, subscriptions. And we found uh, over the years, you know, we started up maybe eight years ago with Leaky Paywall. And there are so many, you know, every publisher has a different approach. Um, and there's so many different uh, variations as, as uh, of revenue streams that kind of wraps around the subscription model that we just needed to start sharing because there was a lot to talk about. There was a lot to, to teach. Yeah. And I like, I like, like you, I like to teach. Um, it's part of my DNA. Um, and uh, so we just have fun doing it. And, and sometimes we'll interview somebody. Sometimes it's just uh, two or three of us uh, talking about some very specific topic, like the, the next one's going to be about, uh, you know, bulk subscriptions. How do you sell corporate subscriptions? You know? Nice. So, nice. Yeah, well, just a lot of Lots. I recommend everyone go out to paywallpodcast.com, sign up for it. Again, I, I subscribe to it on Apple Podcasts. I actually listen to it whenever it comes out, Peter, and I'm driving my kids to school. So um, check that out, guys. Uh, in the meantime, as Peter mentioned, there's a lot to talk about here. There is a ton to talk about here. And uh, I think that one of the uh, challenges that we're going to have here is – we're not going to be able to probably fit this all into one session. <laughs> so not. given that we're not going to fit it all, all into one session, though, uh, I do want to go into a, uh, a few topics here with you. Um, and let me bring up my little, uh, there we go. Ah, I can see what I'm doing here. Um, so I got a whole bunch of topics written down here, but I, I wanted to go in. This is going to be really an open discussion. This isn't necessarily going to be a pre-canned presentation. So again, anyone who has any questions, ship in. I want to start out, though, with one topic, Peter, and I want to talk about hard paywall, 
versus mm -hmm. metered paywall. And of course, there's a spectrum and there's all kinds of different flavors in between. But yeah. what have you seen be most successful or have you seen different models be successful depending upon kind of the market that they're in, B2B, B2C, consumer versus yeah. niche? Yeah. What, do you, what have you seen? Yeah, well, I think generally speaking, if you're a brand, you, if you have a brand, a hard paywall might make more sense for you because you're getting traffic and people know you and you know, you're, you're drawing the line in the sand. Most of what I see are sort of, is sort of a hybrid hard paywall uh, where some stuff is locked down, maybe it's longer form stuff that's obviously high value. And then a lot of stuff is just open. And so the publisher's making that decision. Um, I mean, that it works for some, for some uh, publishers, it really works. Uh, we also find that B2B publishers tend to be more restrictive uh, and find it, we work with a bunch of financial publishers that also want to be very restrictive about the content that they're uh, pushing out. Uh, so they tend to harden the paywall. And what you can actually do, I mean, as an example, you can harden a metered paywall by, uh, so like traditionally with a, with a metered paywall, which is probably the most popular model out there right now, um, is you give people a, a couple of free articles per month, and then you ask them to subscribe or to register for a few more. Um, but how do you harden that without killing your Google traffic, right? And your mm -hmm, social mm -hmm. sharing? Well, you can do it by tracking IP addresses that come in. So um, if, you're, if you're tracking somebody who's on uh, their desktop and they go to incognito, and you're, but you're blocking, um, you're, you're tracking the IP address, you could actually show them the subscription prompt instead of the, the full article and keep them from going around. Uh, so that was going to be one of my questions. Get, I see a lot of people bypassing yeah. meter paywalls through the, either the use of incognito or bringing up a different browser, right? They'll bring up a yeah. you know Safari or they'll bring up Firefox or they'll bring up their mobile device instead. Yeah, exactly. Now it comes with a little bit of a price though. I mean, it's, it works really well, but I mean, if you're, if you're uh, at, a, at a business behind the same IP address and everybody's hitting your site, you're basically blocking everybody from hitting your site. So that's, that's where the, the bulk subscription comes into play, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, right. But, I mean, so do yeah, you, you said you seem, um, now I, I know we're talking about there's, my favorite model I, I would have to say is actually what I call the, the partial hard paywall where let's say about 34, 30, uh, one third of the content that's the most premium content is behind yeah. a hard paywall. The rest of it is outside the yeah. paywall. Um, but yeah. you're saying that you've seen this work, you've seen a metered paywall work better in especially scenarios where people don't already have a lot of traffic, right? It, yeah, well, we, we do see that it works, but we also see that this your your hard hybrid paywall works as well. And, and I think the jury's still out and it really depends on the audience, right? I mean, so sometimes you look, you know, we have a, a sports uh, a publisher in Louisiana and around that area. They, they run six publications um, and they do exactly that. It's a, it, they lock down with locks on their articles, the stuff that they consider premium or maybe a, a category that's premium. And that's it. Yeah. You have to be a paid, paid subscriber um, in order to get to it. And that's working for them. Is it the best model? I, I think it's too early to tell, quite frankly. Um, but they seem to know, you know what they're tuned in with their audience and, uh, and it's working for them right now. So yeah. Yeah, that's what I was gonna show here on the Biz Times model. <laughs> What we talked about, they have like they have a lot of content that is open, but you can see everything that's locked down, and they're actually promoting the fact that it's locked down. Yeah, is indeed yeah, subscriber only content. Yeah. Okay. That, so yeah, so you, that lock that you that you're pointing out there is great. Like that's a that's a really nice visual cue. Without having to say anything, you, you're you're implying that this is premium content. That's what you want. You want to imply that your your content is premium and worth paying for. So that little lock is just part of that equation. So one great. interesting little thing on this one, Peter. One of the things that they did with this that's not just on the website. That's actually that actually gets dynamically inserted into the article title as yep. an emoji, cool. so that when that yep. gets pushed out via their email newsletter, or pushed out on social media, or pushed out through Google News, that little lock goes along with it. Yeah. So kind of interesting. Yeah. I, I I thought on that. Um, so yeah, we talked hard paywall where everything is locked down, nothing's outside the paywall, mm -hmm. metered paywall where, okay, you could see if a couple of articles per month usually, and then that resets more than that, you need to, you need to, to, to pay. And then kind of this, this hybrid, 
uh, that's not really a hybrid, but it's, it's, you know, it's kind of a, a partial hard paywall yeah. where like right. thir- a third of the content is behind a hard paywall, a third of the content, two thirds isn't behind a, uh, that. Is there any other major models that you've seen? Like you talked, I think a little bit of a combination of a registration wall paywall. Yes. So um, let's, I got two, two, can I answer two things there? Yeah, yeah, go for it. <laughs> uh, what, so before we get to the registration, the, the thing that we see a lot, maybe, maybe you have a similar experience is that publishers tend to be pretty generous when they're, when they're turning on their paywall for the first time. Right. Yes. So nervous, you know, don't want to, don't want to scare advertisers, don't want to scare my audience, but we need the revenue so generally, whatever, whatever happens first is pretty generous. A bunch of free articles. Maybe it's a registration with a bunch of free articles that you get each month. And then over time, as they learn what, what that, hey, this, okay, uh, everyone didn't run away screaming. Then they start, start to tighten like how many free articles or, mm-hmm. or, or and, and drawing that line in the sand of when you actually have to pay becomes easier because they're getting the experience. So I don't. I don't see it more as a, as a switch for publishers. I see it more as a, you know, you have the starting line and then you're kind of testing things as you hurdle, go from hurdle to hurdle. Um, Do you see a lot of publishers so, doing that? You know, launching a paywall, maybe more mm-hmm. with a metered model or even with a semi hard where yeah. part of the content's locked down and then they kind of begin to ratchet down a little bit until they find the right sweet spot. Is that what you typically see most publishers doing? Yeah, that that happened. That's very typical. Um, like Small Boats Monthly, uh, we talked about them. Uh, smallboatsmonthly.com. Yeah. So they started out with a pretty generous meter. I forget how many free articles you were able to read each month. And they're they're a niche publisher. It's long form content, a uh, magazine style, and um, and their subscriptions were going along okay. And then what they did is they last summer they added a registration wall. And so what they did is they knocked down the free articles to two. Uh, and, uh, and then the registration wall essentially lets somebody read that article and that's it. So you're not getting extra articles per month. You're only getting that one article after your two are used up. So it's actually pretty restrictive if you think about it. And what, what happened was their, their newsletter signups, um, and paid subscriptions went up 20% month to month once they did that. So they, they're, that's a, I think that's a good example of a, a publisher who got comfortable with the paywall and, and then started restricting. But I, I like what they did though. They had the registration piece in here that you could do to get finished reading that article and right. no more. And you got them in the right. newsletter. I also, by the way, really like how you're taking the approach with like the GDPR regulations here. Sign up for right. our newsletter and continue reading the article. So the action is sign up for the newsletter, not sign up to read right. this article. Oh, by the way, we'll send you the newsletter. Um, (laughs) smart move. Um, but I think this plays into something that you and I were talking about as well, building the email list. Um, I I really want to get your thoughts on that because I know from the experience when we've looked at all different kinds of things, we've looked at website promotions, we've looked at social media ads, we've looked at Google ads, we've looked at other programmatic ads, we've looked at uh, social media boosting, you know, and then we've looked at email and by far and away, the email channel drives the most subscriptions of any channel at the best ROI. Yeah. Um, so that's why I'm a huge fan of, fan, fan of that. But I'm curious to get your thoughts on this and you know, how does the email and building the email fit in with a paywall strategy? Right, right. I'll tell you this, if I could, if I could require every single publisher uh, to uh, do one thing, it would be to set up a registration wall and collect an email address. Um, it's just that important. Um, we're, we're huge fans of it. When we onboard uh, publishers, we talk a lot about uh, about building a registration wall to gather those email addresses because you, your paid subscribers is going to be a, a very small percentage, less than one percent of your audience, right? Um, that means you have ninety nine per, plus percent of casual visitors. A big chunk of those casual visitors are never going to pay; they're just flybys, right? But there's a pretty substantial chunk of I don't know what you can call them super casual readers that may give you their email address because they kind of, they are pretty interested in your publication. They're not ready to buy, to, to subscribe, but they are willing to cough up their email address. So why, why would you not grab that email address, put them on your newsletter, and then your newsletter gets sent to them over time. So you're touching that person every week or day or month or whatever it is, right? 
Um, and that drives, and what you said is right on that. It's the number one driver of paid subscriptions, the, the email and, and, and you own it, you control it. It's not social where the platforms make changes and all of a sudden your visibility is gone. It's, it's your list and it's portable. Yeah, I want to share this real quick because this was from a presentation a while ago. I also think that it has to do with how you build out your audience and that I see publishers sometimes go too far too fast. And mm -hmm. I always find that getting people from being a website visitor or a social media follower into being an email subscriber mm -hmm. is the next logical step. This is like you know going to a coffee shop, seeing someone who looks cute and saying, hey, can I ask you out? Can I get your phone number? Yeah. Instead of saying, hey, you want to get engaged. Yeah. Right? right. You're asking for too much too fast. So if yeah. these people, they care enough about your audience, it's easier to move people from being an email subscriber to a paid subscriber than from just being a website visitor who's never been on email or even worse, just putting an ad out via programmatic of some sort and, and asking people to subscribe for your publication. So yeah, I think you're right yeah. on. Yeah, that's great. That's perfect. And if you're going to spend money on advertising, that then get, you know, the, the end result of that ad should be to push somebody to register for free. So you get that. Email yes. 100% agreed. 100% agreed with that. Um, moving along here. And I do have a couple of questions coming in, which I love. I'm going to be, we're going to definitely be getting to, to, the, to those. Um, let's talk a little bit about the number of offers. So you got somebody who's interested, mm -hmm. Hey, I want to subscribe. And now you come up with a bunch of offers and I hate to do this because I love these guys, but you, you live in New Hampshire, you said. You said. Yeah. So you actually get yeah. the Valley News. Yeah, we get the Valley News. Yeah, we get the digital version of the Valley News. Yes. Digital version of Valley News. Okay, so I was gonna go through, through this real quick here. I'm just gonna say, okay, if I happen to be in the Concord area, I'm gonna put that in and all right, we got six offers. What's your first reaction, Peter, when you see this? And I, I don't wanna pick on Concord because a lot of publishers do this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, you're making me do math. So I don't like math. So I don't, I don't want to do any math. So I'm going to go away, probably. Uh, unless I really, really want to. If I'm, if I'm a diehard because I live here, yeah, I'll subscribe because I'll figure it out. But if I'm like thinking about subscribing, I'm not a diehard, uh, whew, that's rough. Yeah. You're making me try to figure out which is the best value here, which is the best deal. And I'm like, right. uh, I have no idea which is the best deal. Okay, I'm gone. I'm out of here. Yeah, and you know what I'm seeing a lot lately too is if you have, to, if you're selling print and digital, and you're putting them side by side as a choice, the price needs to be the same. It doesn't matter whether it's paper or whether it's digital. It's the content they want. Oh, I'm so glad you said that because this is Corridor Business Journal. One of the things that, that we did here, when you're going to sign up, hey, yeah. choose your delivery option. Do you want print, print plus digital? It's 84 bucks a year. Do you want digital oh, yeah. only? It's 84 bucks a year. The, the point is you're not charging for the delivery mechanism. You're charging for the value of the content. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah. I love it. That's simple because that's not really a choice. It's like, do I want paper, do I want paper or not? And, I, and I'll tell you, I, I subscribed to the print edition of the Valley News for a long time. And we had mm -hmm. small kids at the time. And my wife would say, hey, Pete, could you go clean up the litter at the end of our driveway, please? You know, because we because we had like 14 newspapers strewn along the driveway because we just never were able to get to it because we were, you know, we were busy. And, yeah. and finally, I just changed the subscription to digital. You know, it's like, OK, done. I want yeah. I want the content. Doesn't matter what how it's, you know, shaped. Interestingly, so I've, I've worked with about eight different publishers who do the same kind of model. And so I'll just some general numbers I see. I see anywhere from a quarter to a third of people will choose a digital only option. Surprisingly, whether it's consumer, whether it's B2B, whether it's been regional or national, there's still two thirds of people who want that print at this point. Mm -hmm. um, now, that may be an anomaly, uh, but it's happening to about, about eight different publishers I'm working with at this point from the data I'm seeing. So it'll be interesting to see what you see sometimes in the data back so end. I got, so I got a quick one for you. Modern Drummer Magazine, years ago, we worked with them, uh, launched their paywall. And you know what they did? They, they, their, uh, their print publication was 30 bucks a year to yep. get their, their print magazine. Their digital option was 60 bucks a year. Really? So with, with the, it was print and digital. So you could, you, you could say, okay, 
If I get print and digital, I'll pay 30 bucks. I'll pay less than if I pay, if I go digital only, I pay twice the price. And you know what, you know what happened? 20% of people chose to pay more to pay for the, for the digital, digital only. only. Yes. So it's almost like I'm willing to pay a premium. Yes. I don't know if it's an environmental thing, not to, not yeah. to have people waste print or whatever. Yeah. To not have paper. Yeah, exactly. That's interesting. That's fascinating. Yeah. Well, I, I'm in agreement with you. I see too many publishers that'll go the other way. Hey, I'll do print plus digital at 84 bucks. I'll give you digital only for 60 bucks. Right. And for yeah. a lot of publishers right now, they still rely heavily upon the print subscription yes. numbers for, for their advertising revenue. So anyway, yeah. something to think about there. Can I interrupt one more time? Please do. <laughs> so I, I talked to a publisher recently who uh, was a print publisher and he was going to offer one option. It was print and digital and you can opt out of print during checkout. That mm. was it. I thought that was a pretty interesting idea. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah well, I, and I think that that is something for a lot of publishers to think about that your, 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 your rate base for your advertising um, there's still a lot of publishers who need that print option. So I, I like offering both options and letting the market begin to decide which way they want to go. And then you have the ability to adapt as it goes. But um, I agree. let's talk about multi-step versus single step versus hybrid, you know, uh, su subscription. So I'm usually a fan of the fewer steps, the better. But I think yep. as you and I were talking beforehand, we can also see some opportunities where you might want to do maybe two steps, but this is an example yeah. of a single step subscription where yeah. you do everything on, on, on the one page and you click subscribe now and you're done. There's no multiple steps. Um, yeah. This was an example of, I just did one step. Now I'm going to do a second step and, and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to put a third step in and be done. Um, yeah. So what are your thoughts on, on the different steps and is it was it single single page checkout? Is it multi page multi steps? What what have you found? Um, you know, I think it's under great debate still. I've been I've been in digital marketing for twenty years, and you know we talk about UI all the time and what's what's best. And uh, there was a time where the single page checkout was the way to go, and then that and then all of a sudden. Um, uh, not just publishers, but SaaS companies were doing, you know, multi-step uh, checkout processes. So you start with your name, you know, or just like an email address, right? And then, okay, and then, then once you do the email address, you gain traction with the, the form filling. And then you put in, you know, uh, your name and other information, and uh, maybe at the end, there's a payment. So you had this multi-step process. And uh, for a time, it was, it was doing better than single step, but um, also with the invention of like LastPass and all these, you know, password managers, you know, if you're using something like that on a single, in a single checkout, um, you can just fill it, right? You can just fill everything, you know, your name. That's what your, I use, your I use address. LastPass. Yeah, your credit card. It's, yeah, LastPass is fantastic. Um, I mean, it's almost a requirement now, it seems online. Um, you know, we use a, we use a two-step checkout and one is for registration, which kind of gets the basic info in. And then the second is just the credit card payment. Um, I kind of uh, can dig the, the two-step registration. I'll think more about that as, as we talk, Peter, here. But, you know, I, I do also see like, here's a two-step, right? I'm yep. just going to do something at so yep. some, some bogus here. And now they have my email address and now they're going to do like, they're, they're doing a multi-step account process. Yep. But the first thing to do is, is they're capturing my email address. They make it that simple. Yep. So then I can move on. Now they can always get a hold of me by email and try to upsell yep. me. Yep. Right. And so that is the one advantage of a multi-step versus, right. versus a, a, a single step. Although I am seeing good results with single step as well. Um, yeah. I'll show you one um, Indianapolis business journal. Uh, now these guys are, they're actually doing really well with subscriptions, mm -hmm. Peter, but watch, look at this process here. So they go through the here, and you, you got to, okay, customize this. Tons of options. Do I want mm. this? Do I not want this? Mm. Wow. Then you okay. sign up or log in. Then you put your shipping bill in. Then you put your payment. It's just a six step process. Wow. Wow. But they're actually doing really well. I think it's because it's, it's so focused in such a straightforward process. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah well, the, the navigation's good. You know where you are. Um, the navigation is good. It's pretty straightforward as to what's, what's here. Yeah. But, interesting. Um, th th this was at the one, this was at one end of the spectrum, the six step process. Yep. And then this was at the other end of the spectrum, single page checkout. Yeah. So I, I, I guess, I, I mean, I'm a, 
I lean more toward the fewer the steps, the better. I could yeah. see a two step. Um, yeah. I usually wouldn't recommend though a large multi six step process. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, we, we like the two step because the first step, you know, you do grab the email address right up front. Um, if you're offering a free registration, then that page looks the same, right? So you, you know, you're registering, there's no payment option. And then when you go to pay that information on the first steps already pre-filled and then it, right. the friction goes down a little bit. If you're, if you have someone registered in the system, they don't have to re-enter their, their, uh, they're just entering a, a payment. I'm with you on that. Um, so we're gonna we're not we're gonna about ten more minutes to go here. Uh, I want we we're not gonna have enough to finish this all up in one session, Peter. So maybe we'll schedule a follow up session here with sure. us here. I do have a couple yeah. of questions I want to get to from some people, uh, but I wanted to talk about one more thing here, and that was one of I think you're my favorites, clutter on a subscription page. So for Ooh. example, uh, this is actually a very good publication, Los Angeles Magazine. It's a regional mm. city, city regional publication. I go to subscribe. And when I go to subscribe, this is kind of my little pet peeve. Wow. I've got an ad. I've got another ad. I've got another ad. I've got another ad. I've got social oh, media wow. following. I've got navigation, right? I, I got lots of stuff here. What do you think about this? It's, it's a mess and it's going to send people away. Um, I, I think that when you're asking somebody to enter any information on a screen, your goal is to get them to actually enter that information. And if you get in the way of that goal, then you've already lost. And this is probably the most important uh, piece of, of, a, of a subscription website when you're, when you're asking people to start subscribing. Uh, so if you have a pop-up, if you have visual clutter, if you have even navigation up top, it's all distraction, you know, it's visual distraction. Uh, so you got to get, you got to be really um, uh, vigilant about getting rid of everything except for the registration and the benefit uh, of a subscription. That's it. Yeah. Like here, here's a subscription page again for CBJ. Yeah. That's the way to do it. There's really only like one that. way out and that's to subscribe. Yeah. Of course we do have all the legal stuff at the bottom here. Um, yeah. I think New York yeah. times is the same way, right? If you go to New York times, yep. their offer here, it's got one thing, basically it's subscribe. Yeah. yeah. Think about it. New York times, how many products do they have? I mean, they have games and recipes. They have, you know, they, I, they, they have, I think uh, B2B stuff. Like they have a lot of stuff they can sell, but when you, when you go to check out, it's, it's just simple, right? Well, They're yeah. And what they promote, way. look, they're promoting one offer. Right now they have right. a trial offer, which I think is something we'll definitely want to talk about next is trial offers and things like that. But $1 yeah. a week, trial yeah. offer, $1 a week, yep. trial offer. Everywhere right now, they are doing the $1 offer, $1 a week. Right. And they're, they're not right. cluttering you up with 18,000 different offers. Right. Um, yep. But it, the other thing is here, it's a, it's a dedicated page. There's no ads, there's no navigation. It's just subscribe, yeah. which I, which I, they, I, I really they, like. They, they spend millions on uh, analyzing what's actually works with subscriptions because they were one of the first publishers to really embrace digital subscriptions. And they've, you know, they've, I think, uh, I forget how many, have they hit 10 million uh, digital subs? I don't remember. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a ton. Yeah. They have so a ton. They, These you know, guys in wall street journal and Boston globe, I think were some of the early leaders. They inspired us to start up our leaky paywall and, and, uh, um, and then they just started. And when, and if you, they say started in uh, uh, 2011, right? So it was a little over 10 years ago they started. Mm -hmm. And if you look at a growth chart of subscribers, um, they've been growing every year, grow, grow, grow. But over the last um, like three years, three to four years, the growth has actually increased. It's accelerated. It's an amazing Especially with, curve the, with the pandemic. Launch. Right. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yep. yep. They, just, they just crossed 10 million. Yeah. Yeah. In is, when they hit one, when they hit 1 million, it blew the socks off the publishing industry. Right. Well, know? part of the reason also is, is they, they acquired the athletic. And yeah, so sure. with the, it was the acquisition of the athletic that knocked them over 10 million subscriptions total yeah. as a property. Yeah. But, um, and again, the athletic is another very good paywalled site out there. One of the, one of the, one of the leaders in the space, I would say. Uh, yep. If you ever checked out what they what they do yep. here, and they're they're pretty much a hard paywall, right? They've got everything is hard paywalled. Yeah. Um, hey, I want to get to a couple of questions here. So, so gang, you you should see the, the list that Peter and I have all these different topics we could talk about. Um, 
you, you know, uh, I think we, we didn't talk at all about, you know, auto renewal, about how to promote subscriptions, about mobile, about revenue streams, about offers, you know, any of that kind of stuff. We're probably not going to have time to get into that t today. So maybe if you're up for it, we'll schedule a, a session to somewhere down the road here. For um, sure. But I wanted to, add, to get a couple of questions in that people have, have asked. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, Re Rebecca Sterner, great circulation consultant, by the way, has said most of Ti New York Times growth has come from their games and recipes that they have. And now, obviously, acquisition of The Athletic on here. Mm -hmm. um, yep. uh, Fr uh, Frank asks, says, many publications have pretty basic reader service and technology um, for brands considering a paywall, what do they need to prepare for in terms of customer service and resources that need to be dedicated to problem resolution? Um, mm. Let me throw in one thought, and then Peter, I'd like to, for you to hear your thoughts on this too. So, so Frank, I think one of the things is um, certainly what you're using as your circulation management system and your paywall can eliminate a ton of issues, both on the reader side and from your side on the implementation. So, you know, I, I, uh, Peter, you can talk a little bit about Leaky Paywall if you'd like. It's one of my my favorites. Another one that I like to use is, frankly, I, I, I we use WooCommerce, Woo Membership, Woo Subscriptions, and we manage it all right there. Um, there, when you're doing it well with the right systems, there's still all the configuration that needs to be done. But if, if you're number one, if you're on the WordPress platform and you're on an email marketing automation platform that integrates with that. So you know who's a, who's a subscriber and who's not in your email package. Um, and then you, if you get the right kind of paywall uh, system, it can eliminate a lot of problems, but there's still some customer service issues and some technology support issues that you're going to have to do no matter which way. Peter, what are your thoughts? <laughs> well, it's not, it's not my area of expertise, but I do know that Publishers should always be ready for uh, a level of administration. You're going to have uh, plenty of people that just can't log in, no matter what you tell them to do, and everything's working fine. They can't figure it out. So you're going to have that personality type, and then you're going to have uh, edge cases where people are using, uh, you know, weird browsers or or um, they're behind a VPN or they. They're, they're not getting password reset emails. I mean, there's, there's all sorts of little things that, that can sort of chip away at your time that you have to deal with, but you do have to deal with it. So um, yeah, of course you want a system that's well put together. You want to, you want people to be able to log in and get access to, to things. And you want to you want to test that, you know, before yeah. you launch, you just need to test it like crazy, go get in yourself and, you know, subscribe uh, and, and just, look at every step very carefully, very closely, take your time, make sure it's, it's saying everything you want it to say, promoting, you know, why you'll make the, your audience's life better, that whole process. Uh, but yeah, um, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a topic. Um, we, we don't deal with it directly that, that much. Um, but we, but when we get a publisher that's coming in for the first time with a, with a paywall, which we deal with lots, lots of, um, you know, we're always saying, hey, look, you know, you're, you're going to get questions. You just need to be prepared, put together docs that, you know, that, that, that answer, like how to log in. FAQs. And, you know, yeah. How to upgrade. And what, what does that mean? And all, all those FAQs. Very well, I know a lot of publishers outsource their circulation fulfillment to third party houses yeah. out mm -hmm. there. Um, and I think you integrate with a lot of those too, don't you? With Leaky Paywall? Yep. Yeah, yep, there's other paywalls do. that will integrate with those too, um, but uh, the, the the key is whether you're whether you're doing it internally, or whether you're using a third party, you definitely yeah. have to think through all those issues and you have to write those those down. I will tell you this though, the more and more publishers I've got more I, I see more and more publishers actually moving more of that internally because they're realizing mm. it's actually there's actually not that much mm. support, especially if you're in a niche market. If you're in a big yeah. mass market, okay, maybe you want to do that externally and as a, on a contract basis. But I mean, like, for instance, I've got some controlled circulation publications and some paid publications. They maybe get f four or five customer service requests a month and a couple of bad postal addresses a month. So that, for what that's worth. That's, that's great to hear. I, I think there's, there's an opportunity to um, answering questions directly 
which which not only gets the question answered, but helps you create new systems, better systems than if you're outsourcing to a third party. Mm-hmm. And then you 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 know you, who knows where these conversations lead to? You're talking to your audience, to your best, you know, dedicated audience that they're you know they're they're emailing you means that they're taking the trouble to connect with you. So they're one you know, and if they're a paid subscriber, yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll give you intel that you can use for, for well. And off, oftentimes better. the customer doesn't know. Okay, is this a problem with the circulation system? A problem with the paywall? A problem with the login on the website? Is a problem with the right. email? You know, they don't know what the, they just know they have a problem. And so you've yeah. got one place where they're going to solve a problem rather than if it's just circulation fulfillment, well, the outsourced circulation fulfillment provider is only going to talk about that. They don't know anything about else about your ecosystem uh, unless you've trained them, unless you've trained them. Um, One more question here. Do you have any any suggestions on how to evaluate whether a brand's audience is ready for a paywall? Uh, Mm. Scaring the average audience and advertisers are things many brands are worried about. Ooh, I've got some thought on the advertisers, but how about you? How do you know if, if an audience is ready for a paywall. What are some of your key indicators? You're producing unique content you can't get anywhere else. I, I yes. think that I good think content. That is, yeah, great content. You're, you know, um, we do we do deal with publishers that you know uh, buy content doesn't work so well. But unique content, the nichier the better. Uh, and I couldn't consider local news super niche, right? Because you know you're 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 a monopoly in your local news area. Um, and we are ready. We are as subscribers. We're in a subscription economy. We Netflix popularized subscriptions. Um, we now subscribe to everything, and good content is no different. Um, and if you're if you're if you're scared, start a reg wall. You know, tell people tell people paid subscriptions are coming, but you can get in for free for the moment. Who, who um, was it that started? You did that started with a reg wall and then moved to a paywall. Uh, but, uh, that was the, biz- the business journal. Uh, business journal did, daily. Yeah. yeah. Just there talk briefly about this, then we're probably gonna have to wrap it up here. Sure. So uh, last year they uh, they set up a registration wall. You they I think they gave away two free articles uh, on the meter uh, for free each month, uh, but then you had to register. T- uh, and once you registered, you gained full access to all their content. And they ran that for about seven or eight months. And what happened the first three months they so they started with with uh, a, li- a list of a certain size. Um, they actually more than doubled the list in three months. Like it was astounding how many how many people registered for their site. And then now today, um, now that they've grown their list amazingly well in in, in a year, essentially, uh, they're now asking for paid subscriptions. So they, um, you know, they were very cautious uh, stepping forward into a paywall. Yeah. But um, the reg wall was 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 I think re- ultimately a really good step for them. Um, as far as the question is the impact on the advertisers, I'll talk to you a little bit about, about my thoughts on there. So uh, I've worked with a couple of different city and regional magazines. I guess it depends upon the publication. But um, we started talking about the potential of launching uh, a paywall, uh, a, you know, a, a partial hard paywall. So again, about a third of the content would have been locked behind the paywall. Two thirds would have been outside the paywall. And they were very concerned, the CEO was concerned, the salespeople were concerned that if they did that, um, even the editorial staff was concerned, their traffic would take a hit, right? Mm -hmm. So the editorial people were concerned because they're like, well, we don't want to, you know, we only want to, we only want to see our site numbers go up, right? Because all they're concerned about is bigger audience, bigger audience, bigger audience, but hey, at a publisher level, at a CEO level, you're also concerned about growth and profit and revenue and, and, and profit too. So it's not just, you know, audience growth for the sake of audience growth. So we had to get over that and the fact that, okay, hey, if you're, let, let's say for worst case scenario, which I've never seen this happen, by the way, in launching a paywall, every time I've launched a paywall or a reg wall, I've actually never seen traffic decline, or maybe it's only by a percentage point or two. Um, it never declines that bad. But um, let's, let's say worst case scenario, your traffic went down by 20%, 20% which I've never seen happen anywhere near that. Um, so, okay, editorial staff, would you rather be able to hire another another assistant editor or another editor uh, with the extra revenue, or would you rather have a few more, re- you know, more, more readers? Well, they're, they're, hey, they want more resources. Um, you know, sales team, how sold out are you on your inventory? Um, are you selling out 100% of your ad inventory? Well, no, we're selling about 60% on average. Okay, so if you lost 20%, you still have 20% headroom you could grow. 
right? Um, and so when we started looking at all those things, we're like, there's really no business rationale, even mm. in the worst case scenario, not to do it. Now, yeah. they still haven't pulled the trigger. They still haven't because they're still afraid. And mm. I understand that. I get that. You you don't want to rock rock the apple cart. Um, mm. But I think we have really look at it from a business dynamic standpoint. I, I, if you've got, like Peter said, really good content that is unique, that you're providing, it's valuable. People pay for it and you can you can overcome the advertiser objections. Well, think about if you have a reg wall, which you have, you should <laughs> generally, um, and you're, you're, it works incredibly well. People are signing up constantly. You're actually growing your, your email newsletter, which you can uh, charge more for sponsorships. Um, you can, we have a publisher in Australia, a rugby publisher, and they actually have a sponsor for their free registration card on their website. So they pay for that. They pay, they pay to be sponsored in the welcome email off the free registration. They pay for a certain level of emails that go out and they get their branding on it. Um, and then they're, and then the newsletter is growing. So, the, so then the newsletter is, is driving these free registered users back to the content every day, right? It's driving traffic. You're growing your traffic through, through a, 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 what I consider the right way to set up a, a, a paywall system. I agree. Well, Peter, this has been a lot of fun. I'm, I'm sure you and I could probably go on for hours on end about this. Uh, this is why you have a whole podcast about it. So again, I, I definitely highly recommend you out to the uh, paywallpodcast.com. Sign up out there, listen to Peter's stuff. They got about once a month you guys publish, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's about Thereabouts. Right. Yep. Um, and I'm sure there's tons more questions coming in. We just don't have any more time for, for, for today, but uh, we'll have to do maybe a session too, if you're up for it, because there's a, a lot more topics we had written down that we weren't able to get to quite yet. Absolutely. Love talking so that'd be about fun. it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, gang, thank you so much for your time today. Peter, thank you for your time. And uh, I hope you'll have a wonderful rest of the week.